Hey everyone, Matt here from Herbal House and in this video we're taking a look at Blue Lab pH pens which you can see just here. I'm going to show you how to calibrate it and care for it because it's quite important to make this equipment last a lifetime and they certainly do, you just got to look after them. So starting with the Blue Lab pH pen, when you purchase it you get this beautiful box, pH pen inside and three sachets. Now two of these sachets are there for calibrating initially out of the box. As soon as you get the pen you want to do that beforehand and some storage solution there which you'll be topping up in the base of the cap. That's going to help look after the probe or the sensor of the pen essentially. Now here at Herbal House we do offer uh, online a pre-calibration uh, option for the pen itself. For a lot of people that's quite easy uh, than them having to do it and what we would do is we would pre-calibrate the pen for you and we will leave these sachets inside so you can recalibrate again at another time. In saying that the calibration the procedure we're going to be carrying out there's actually a little icon on the display no it's a little tick essentially and that's there to indicate that the pen is calibrated when that tick disappears it recommends you recalibrate bear in mind i believe that is a 30 day timeout so for a lot of people it'll time out and you've only used the pen a couple of times you don't need to stress about that that's more for commercial application it's there to remind the staff that they need to recalibrate their instruments domestic application it's definitely not as necessary to calibrate that often although it is nice to do it of course so I just thought I'd run through the products here. Blue Lab pH pen just over here. Here is some concentrate calibration solutions. So for instance, if you feel like you're gonna be doing this quite often, those sachets aren't gonna cut it. They sell them in these bottles here. It goes a much further distance if you need to be doing it frequently. And I will mention if you are using this stuff, you don't just put the pen straight in the bottle, you're gonna pour this out into a little cap, which I'll be mentioning in a second. This is the care, what do they call it? The pH probe care kit. So, Blue Lab specifically makes a care kit which includes a whole bunch more sachets. It comes with a couple little cups that you can use to pour the sachets into to put the pH pen in. It comes with a cute little toothbrush and some solution for cleaning the probe itself because if you've used the probe a fair few times it tends to get a bit, of a bit of a scale or a film on there and that can affect your reading or the response time so cleaning it is quite important. So now that we've covered pretty much all the essential products let's get into actually calibrating the pen. Okay, so just to mention here, we've got our fresh pH pen. This hasn't been calibrated or seen any exposure to any nutrient or water. It is still fresh in the cap. Now, I've just taken those three cups that were included in the care kit and I've poured out some solution. I've got pH 4, pH 7, and this is just tap water for rinsing. Now, if you're using the sachets, we highly recommend you get a coffee cup or a mug, tear the sachet off and place the sachet in there. Don't actually pour the sachet out and then you can just rest it in the top of the sachet. You kind of get what I mean. Uh, but the idea is we're using the solutions here because we already had these bottles open. So what we would do is you're going to start with pH 7. So just removing the cap here, we're just going to expose the sensor to the pH 7. Now you need to ensure there's enough in there of course for the sensor to dip in there. I've already just turned the thing on by uh, pushing the power button there which has just woken it up. So we'll just give that a little bit of time to adjust and find its happy place. So we're sitting at about, what's that say, 6.9. So ideally you want to give it sort of 30 seconds or so just to equalize, we would say. Okay, so I'll just take a quick look at that. It's sitting at pH 7, which is exactly what you want, I guess. It's showing that it's pretty darn well calibrated straight out of the box. So what we're going to do is we're just going to press and hold the cal button for calibrate. Quite self-explanatory there. Hold that down for a bit and it's pretty much going to start loading doing its thing. So you just want to leave the uh, pH pen in there of course while it does this. Just waiting, just waiting, just waiting. Cool, so that said Cal and 7 at the bottom. Now if you run into any problems it'll say ER for error that it's run into some strife trying to do that and there can be a number of things that cause that. Of course there is a troubleshooting guide for that if it does occur. So what we're going to do is just take this and we're just going to rinse it off. So we don't want to be contaminating our pH 4 solution. So just sort of wiping that, uh, rinsing that off there. And I just give it a little shake just to shake off any excess. You don't want to completely dry out your sensor, but you definitely don't want to be cross contaminating. So start with pH 7, calibrate, and then over to 4. So we'll just give that uh, 30 seconds or so. And... Um, We'll just see how we go there, so I'll just make the display awake. So it's also measuring temperature, which is quite nice, which seems to be 22 degrees as ambient today, which is quite warm. And we'll just give that 30 seconds or so to find its happy place. Okay, so I'll just wake up the display so you can see what's going on there. So it's saying about 3.9, it was tending to hover around 4 and 3.9, so within a point 
of a reading there, which is absolutely fantastic. So we're just gonna hold the key cal button again for calibrate. I'm just gonna let that load and do its thing. So the display's gone dark, so you might struggle to see that on camera, but it is saying cal, and it said four for referencing pH four, and now we have a little tick down the bottom near next to the pH. So that's referencing she's all calibrated and good to go. So like I said, you get about a 30 day period before it uh, lapses on the tick, but it is letting you know that straight out here, it is ready to go and be using your nutrient and give you accurate readings, which is absolutely fantastic for an instrument like this. Uh, before you're done though, just give it a little rinse and it is good to go straight back in the cap. But before I close the cap, uh, you might want to take a, a quick note that in the base of the cap, there is actually a little sponge where the sensor sits. This is where you're going to be applying your probes care solution. They call it KCI storage solution. Now, there is already some in there, of course, uh, but it is good to ensure that it's topped up because as they say, if the sensor dries, it dies, um, which is quite a nice way to put it. So you always, always wanna make sure that it's kept. Always put the cap back on after you are done using it, and that should ensure this pen lasts a very long time. Now, I will also quickly mention that there is a battery inside this uh, instrument. There are two screws at the top that you'll undo, pull that apart, and there is, I believe, one AAA in there. You just wanna make sure when you put it back together, the screws are nice and tight so it's waterproof because these are fully submersible. Okay, so just before we wrap this up, uh, cleaning it is pretty straightforward. Uh, essentially, if you've got the care kit, you're gonna get this cute little toothbrush here that I'll just pop out of its case. And you can see that just there. And there is essentially, I'd call it toothpaste, but it really looks like dish detergent, but I'm sure it is something more special than that. So you just apply a little bit to the uh, end of the brush and you're just essentially going to gently swab and clean primarily the glass dome. When you have your pH pen, you'll see what I mean. Gently scrub that clean, give it a rinse, and then immediately store it back in the cap or even dunk it in some KCI storage solution. Again, the storage solution is so critical to making these pens last uh, because you just gotta keep that probe hydrated to ensure that the readings are accurate. But it really is that straightforward as far as the pH pen goes, so we're absolutely chuffed to offer these and see so many people have such good, reliable results for them. So hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions at all, just get in touch with us here at Herbal House.